Right, I'm about to start work now on the crankshaft, putting the uh, con rods on and so forth. Uh, but the first job is I'm going to fit the inner race of the timing side main bearing. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to heat the bearing up and then uh, slide it on. I've got a, a, an old uh, box spanner that's the perfect size, and then and I shall drive that on but first of all I'm going to heat the bearing up but of course they have like a plastic uh, cage these days and if I use a blowtorch it will melt the cage so I'm going to use uh, a hot like a hot air gun on a not too hot a setting get that nice and warm and it's, it's pretty cold down in the garage so this is already cold the crankshaft <clears throat> and hopefully by warming that up it should uh, should go on yeah, so that's all done. So I um, heated the bearing up, got it nice and warm with a with a heat gun, and then it just slid on pretty easy. Used my box spanner and a hammer, and just drifted it on, and it went on nice and snug. Right, I'm getting ready to put the con rods on the crankshaft. So I've uh, just inserted the new big end shells. They simply just push in, they locate there at uh, either end. The, the, um, the big end shells, they don't have any holes in because there's, they, there's, there's no uh, oil coming up, uh, you know, going out. Uh, it needs to go out through them or whatever. So uh, they're plain, fully plain. Uh, and so then what I'll do is I will put a lot of assembly lube, a lot of assembly lube on all the bearing surfaces then put the um put the con rods on and then i tighten them uh, these are special nuts i think they're called cleave lock generally i don't know if these have got a separate name uh, they're like lock nuts but not nylock because nylock the, the nylon under the heat can melt and so they're no good so these are like a metal locking nut but i'll put some uh, i'll put some thread lock on as well and then they're going to be tightened they're going to be tightened up to a 22 foot pound torque um, I'm slightly confused about this, I have to say. I think earlier models, T150s, is an 18 foot pounds. It's recommended for big ends, but for T160, it's 22. I think that most people use 22 for all triples now, but just be aware that officially it's 18 for the earlier models and 22 for the T160. So I'll be using 22 on these because uh, I know it's right. Um, but I double check if you're doing a T150 or whatever. I can't remember what I, to be honest, I can't remember what I did mine up to when I did it. Uh, that's about, oh yeah, and of course the um, the uh, con rods are marked. They've got a center punch, and then on the con rod on these, I've got a very rubbishy um, mark. But there is a mark on all the con rods. Um, there is a punch mark. Oops, go on, focus. Come on. Don't know where the, there it is. There is a punch mark on all the con rods. So to make sure you get that the um, to make sure you get them around the right way, they have to. There's the punch marks there and there. You have to you know, put put the ends on the right way around because they're machined that way. Okay, so I'm going to put some lube on. Put the con rods on. Put some. Uh, uh, thread lock on the threads and tighten the nuts up to 22 foot pounds okay the uh, con rods uh, are in they've been lubricated and the nuts tightened up to 22 foot pounds should just fall under their own weight happy with that happy with that happy with that okay so we're all good they're all uh, done up they're all uh, nice just slowly falling under their own weight yeah and they all seem smooth got to double check double check obviously if there's any anything if one's tighter than the other or whatever then you know you need to do it now address the problem now you know it, it could be a, a missed ground crank it could be a it could be a problem with the shells Generally, I've never. You don't have problems because everything's 
you know, everything's done so well by the engineers, but if there is a problem, you need to investigate it. It can be a problem, big end bolts, uh, they can be a problem. The threads obviously uh, can go and then you're getting a false uh, torque. You need to make sure that the that the, um, you know, the threads are all okay. I mean, when I did the commando, they, they, <laughs> they gave me these uh, new big end nuts. I put them on and uh, they're the wrong thread. They'd actually sent me the uh, you know big end uh, big end nuts that were the wrong thread, and then told me you know when I rang up and I said you know and they said oh no no they're okay no one else has ever complained, you know, <laughs> and then you think is it me, and then you think that's not me, and you send them back and they go oh right yeah mm, there does seem to be a problem here, you know you've got to be dead careful. Right, but anyway I'm happy with that. Right, so now we're going to put the uh, crankshaft into the uh, center crankcase uh, and so I've inserted the uh, new uh, shells in the mains here these have got holes in uh, and grooves obviously you want the oil to come up and go around the grooves because it's going to go through the crankshaft and uh, you know up it's going to go down through these holes in the crankshaft and then to the big ends so that's why there are grooves and holes you can't not miss a line because all the shells have got holes in so even these top shells that that don't actually have a hole in the in the um, cap you know there's a hole in the shell so you can only put the shells in one way I mean you can't put them in the wrong way uh, and then the caps are marked time inside and uh, drive side T and D and they've got a number 5720 I just mentioned that all all the cases and everything are all stamped 5720 yeah 5720 I'll just show you other cases um, 5720 5720 that's because what they did at the factory they put all the cases together and then they would uh, line bore them so they're all uh, exactly uh, everything was completely in line and then they'd stamp them with a number and so if ever the cases got split then you knew which case went with which uh, which engine um, and that's why it's difficult to renew the cases sometimes um, because they were line board and you might get a, a new, let's say you need a new time in case you could buy a second hand one. It might not line up perfectly because, you know, it was so exact that one engine, you know, didn't line up quite with the next one. So ideally they should all have the same number stamped on them. Okay, so I've lubed up the uh, mains with assembly lube and uh, all the... Uh, plain bearings and then I'm going to lower the crankshaft in uh, and put the caps on and do the nuts up now these nuts the main uh, the main bearing cap nuts they will actually still be done up at 18 foot pounds they didn't increase I think they increased the um, the poundage on the conrods because I know of I know of at least two bikes that the big end nut actually came loose back in the day and I think that's why they inc increase the recommendation to 22 from 18 but the mains um, stay at 18 so I'm going to lift the crankshaft in I'm going to put the mains on and then just check it obviously that everything's turning nicely right uh, crankshaft's been lifted in and I put the caps on <coughs> I'll just remind you that you can't get the crankshaft in uh, with um, the studs in you have to remove those because the crankshaft only they have to be in an exact position and in that position then it catches on the studs um, but uh, you know it's all uh, all very good obviously the caps are just loose uh, and then I'm going to put the uh, nuts on with the lock tabs I'm also going to use uh, Loctite on them as well just belts and braces approach they're going to be torqued down now to uh, to 18 okay crankshafts in and I've torqued up the nuts to 18 with the lock tabs on those those little ears on the lock tabs here that fit over the over the bearing caps okay don't fit me the other way up uh, and uh, I've not uh, turned the locking tabs over yet because you know I'm just checking that everything's okay and I'm really uh, really happy it's nice and really nice and smooth turning okay so uh, there we go crankshaft all in and I've turned up the, the lock tabs now Double check the uh, torque 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry assemble. Uh, just going to loosely put on both sides, both crank sides, uh, and then and also insert the camshafts so that um, uh, I can just check that everything is turning nice and smoothly. And then I'll take it apart again and uh, pre prep it properly and then assemble them uh, properly. Uh, I'm going to be putting some uh, oil on the main bearings. I'm going to oil them. I'm not going to be uh, using some assembly lube not on, on the bearings, on plain bearings like the, the camshafts I am. Now, it's very, very important to um, lube the camshafts. They're the, probably the most important thing to lube. Now, these plain bearings, they're, they're not bushed. There's no there, there's no fossil bronze bush in, in these cases. They're straight into the into the alloy three places one here on this side and two uh, on the timing side um, and so they've really got to be lubed uh, a lot and uh, just by the by I've just realized after all these years that the camshafts are actually the same the exhaust and the inlet camshafts are the same the only difference is that the, the exhaust on the on the right has got that screw plug in it's got the threads for the inlet, but uh, there's no plug, and that plug on the right is to drive the uh, to drive the tack. But otherwise, they're the same cam shaft. Right, uh, just uh, put the uh, cams in the time inside, just and they feel really nice. Just to check that's all okay before assembly. Very nice, very nice. Okay, and uh, here we go. We're going to put the cases together. Right, so I've got the uh, drive side on, and uh, it all feels good. It's only it's only it's not bolted up, obviously, but it all feels good. A couple of things: uh, putting the drive side on, you need to put the camshafts in first. You can't put the drive side on and then put the camshafts in because they'll uh, they catch on the crank cases. So that feels good. Oh, and also you need to make sure that this. Uh, Conrod, which I need to put the protection back on, is uh, in between the two camshafts because it won't go past them. So if you if you leave that hanging at the bottom, put the that side on, then you you can't uh, you can't lift the the uh, conrod back up. So make sure that uh, drive side conrod is is upwards. Okay, there we are. Cases dry assembled back together. I will be taking them apart again, but I'm just putting them together just so that I can. Uh, see how things are going and uh, I'm generally I'm very pleased it's very difficult for me now to turn stuff just with one hand with the uh, conrods uh, protected but it turns very smoothly and uh, so do the camshafts they're nice and smooth tight but smooth yeah and the same for the for the crankshaft no uh, that's good that's good just uh, need to um, then obviously things aren't tightened up yet, but um, you know, uh, but I'm happy the way things are. So I've now taken them, the two sides back off again, uh, and and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put well seal uh, around the mating surfaces. Uh, I've got the uh, rubber O rings in place, so that's the O rings where the cross shaft is on the two outer cases and I've got the two o-rings in place <coughs> around the where the <coughs> oil filter goes on the inner case and they, they come with a gasket set oh and well they come with a gasket set and I also ordered an o-ring an set as well um, so they come with that I've got the uh, camshafts in and I know they're turning correctly I've got the uh, inlet cam to the rear of the engine the exhaust cam with a slot in it to the front of the engine and so we're all ready to go um oh yeah and i've put in the two i've put the two studs back in i've got a new uh, set of engine bolts and i've put the that's nice I've, I've put the two studs back in making sure that this conrod was in the middle because uh once you put the stud in then if you, the conrod's at the bottom, there's no way you can bring it back up again. So, um, because the studs are in the way. 
All right, there we go. I have uh, put well seal on all the mating surfaces and I'm just leaving it a bit to go off. Right, I've just tapped the timing side on. It's not tightened up yet. And uh, I've also put a little bit of uh, bearing locker on, on the crankshaft um, because it's not that tight a fit on this bearing and I don't want it to spin. So I'm just putting a bit of uh, lock on there to make sure the bearing doesn't spin. And there we have it at last. Crankcases are together and uh, back in the engine stand. Okay, and turns over, it all turns over really nicely. I'm not going to turn it over too much. I don't want to damage the uh, conlogs. And the, uh, yeah, and the cams are turning nicely as well. Yeah, I get my finger behind it, yeah. So that's all good. Uh, done up, but uh, the torque, I think it's uh, 12 pounds per foot, 12 pounds per foot. To be honest, I just do them up until they're pretty tight. But there is actually a torque setting. Don't forget that there are two uh, Allen screws. There's that one and that one on the timing side. All the rest are all the rest of bolts, apart from the two studs uh, on the timing, top of the timing. But there we are, all in, all turning nicely. Uh, happy so far. Uh, so I mean, so far so good. Uh, so I'll start now. Next job is to start slowly adding the various. Uh, accessories bits back on so I'll put the uh, put the taco drive on I'll put the uh, oil filter in but I think first of all what I'm going to do first is I'm going to build the top end I'm going to put the uh, pistons on the barrels the head and the rockers I'm going to do the whole top end first and then I'll come back to doing the rest of the engine so uh, next up it's pistons and barrels but as I was saying so far so good pleased and just to mention that if you want any more detailed information about what's on the videos, then there is the workshop manual that goes uh, alongside the videos and that covers restoring the whole bike, not just the engine. Uh, and that's available from all uh, good booksellers around the world. You can just put my name, uh, Chris Rook, into the search bar, like Amazon search bar or wherever, and it, uh, and it should come up.